Uh, I am Nicole Soranzo. I'm a senior group leader at the Sanger Institute and also um, a group leader at the University of Cambridge and uh, Human Technopole in Milano. Um, I'll be introducing this meeting on behalf uh, of colleagues that you can see here, which are colleagues uh, of the um, ICDA um, Executive Committee, newly formed. Uh, and really the, the purpose of this open, uh, um, open meeting, which will always also be uh, recorded and put online, uh, is that to uh, show you uh, progress uh, on, uh, on a, a planning activity of ICDA uh, in different areas and really uh, give everybody an opportunity uh, to engage with this uh, uh, project and, and uh, to uh, ask questions or, 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 or make suggestions and uh, um, uh, further engagement. So we had uh, one similar event yesterday, uh, and this is a second one. And, and within uh, this, we will take turns both in presenting uh, in, in slightly uh, greater de detail some of the uh, ongoing and planned activities and also uh, solicit feedback. Uh, so if you would like to uh, go to the next slide, uh, Kate, please. So um, the ex executive uh, committee is uh, made of the uh, seven uh, members shown here, which uh, are uh, really been uh, identified uh, through um, you know collective uh, uh, collective uh, um, uh, proposition for, for members of the ICDA community, uh, and really the, the goal here is to uh, increase uh, um, in representation in the uh, leadership of this project, uh, and particularly to spread the representation uh, to represent the community, different communities of scientists uh, worldwide. So uh, together with uh, myself, who's active both in the north of Europe, in the UK, and also in the south of Europe, uh, uh, in Italy are Cecilia Lindgren, uh, Nikki Tiffin, Parta Majunder, uh, Yuki Okada, and Andres Moreno Estrada. Uh, very much uh, all very <laughs> friendly people, very, very happy always to uh, engage uh, uh, scientifically and on a personal level. So if you could go to the next slide, please, Kate. Uh, so um, the ICD is a project that is now in uh, uh, nearly its uh, uh, um, uh, fourth year since, uh, since uh, uh, convening, first convening. And really the original idea of this is to, was to bring together a community of scientists that, that work uh, uh, on really uh, both identifying uh, disease susceptibility variants for uh, all the major uh, diseases, common diseases, but also to accelerate uh, the uh, translation of uh, genetic information uh, into uh, uh, both mechanisms, uh, understanding of mechanisms, for instance, the underlying genes or the underlying uh, uh, effects for regulatory variants, and of course, uh, deciphering uh, the, the, uh, the regulatory code and underpinning that, uh, but also that uh, to uh, uh, accelerate the translation of uh, uh, genetic information and mechanisms uh, into medicine. So the M2M2M uh, stands uh, um, exactly for that. And so the, uh, the idea is that we, we want to uh, bring together the community to uh, leverage each other's uh, uh, um, skills and expertise and, and also uh, work to uh, uh, achieve this acceleration. So from the uh, original um, idea back in 2018 in a meeting in New York City, uh, we had an, a number of uh, gatherings as uh, shown in this timeline here that uh, culminated in the draft in a release of a first set of uh, uh, recommendation and a white paper that really described the, uh, the intention and activities and recommendation for how to take this work of accelerating. Um, and accelerating our mission. Um, and from this uh, has followed a number of uh, 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 scientific meetings, including uh, uh, plenary during the pandemic time, uh, and is now, uh, in, in fact, moving into active uh, stages uh, of uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, planning. So uh, we had the uh, first uh, set of uh, uh, scientific uh, strategy uh, workshop uh, that will be presented uh, in greater detail later. So if you could go to the, um, to the next uh, slide, please. Um, so really um, we identified uh, uh, four main uh, uh, function through which uh, we want to uh, work to uh, bring together the community to accelerate uh, M2M2M uh, uh, work. And you'll hear in detail about uh, each of these later. And this goes from 
uh, you know, supporting the community in, 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 in bringing together projects to the strategic coordination uh, of some of these activity to convening uh, scientific, uh, uh, scientific members into, um, uh, into um, you know, focused uh, areas of work, uh, setting the vision, of course, for what we want to achieve as a community, and finally, uh, activities, very important activities of uh, community engagement, training, and uh, dissemination. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Kate. Uh, but it's important also to uh, identify what uh, ICDA is not doing or doesn't want to do. So really, uh, the idea is that we don't want to replace individual activities brought forward by both different research groups, recent uh, re research centers, but also uh, indeed um, large scale initiatives. Uh, uh, and we don't want to replace them. So we don't really want to have a centralized, organized and monolithic mammoth project, but really more of an opportunity for science, like-minded scientists or scientists with a common interest to bring uh, together this interest. Uh, again, uh, we don't want to replace and gulf or compete. We don't go in distinct effort. So there are many uh, large scale initiatives that are pursuing aspects uh, uh, of the work. Uh, and uh, of course, the intention is not to replace or engulf this, but rather uh, to uh, build on this. And in fact, as you will see, many of us are uh, already involved in many of these scientific uh, initiatives. And finally, uh, it's worth stating that ICDA is not a funding organization. We don't issue grants, uh, but uh, we can rather play an important role in, uh, again, convening a community uh, of scientists with also, in, in part, community of funders, for instance, through our, uh, our um, industry partners. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so really, the the, uh, the the ICDA's vision is uh, uh, perhaps uh, well summarized here and, and partly mentioned before uh, is really that uh, to uh, you know starting from particularly from our under current understanding of uh, common disease predisposition coming from uh, genetic uh, association work is that to, to accelerate the process of bringing together genetic information uh, to produce maps uh, as comprehensive as possible, indeed uh, uh, fully comprehensive maps of genetic uh, uh, predisposition uh, to uh, advance understanding of the molecular and cellular mechanism for these genetic uh, uh, associations. And finally, to uh, sift through the, you know, now millions of data points and various layers of evidence to uh, uh, accelerate understanding of the physiology of disease and, 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 and the medical and translational opportunities. And, uh, and, and part of this motivation has really come forward from uh, the fact that we realize that there, you know, this is a painstaking work, but there are also uh, both many bottlenecks, but also repeated efforts across groups around the world. And we want to make sure that we can, to some extent, coordinate and streamline uh, activities uh, in, 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 this, in this area. Uh, the one point to, to make uh, really uh, uh, clear in the, in, the, in the genetic map, as we know so far, genetic studies have mostly uh, focused uh, on uh, uh, subjects of uh, European ancestry, indeed Northern European ancestry. And one of the main goals for us is really that to, to accelerate the, you know, the benefit of genomic medicine across all the populations in the world. So there is a, a strong component of uh, uh, wishing to accelerate uh, profiling of genetic variation across uh, different world populations. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I think it, what uh, um, I, I think this is now. Uh, I think is this the time to to introduce our speakers or? Okay, so sorry, I, I am looking for my notes. So what, what we will do, um, um, so what we will do uh, now is that uh, to um, introduce different speakers, which are colleagues uh, from the executive committee uh, who will uh, uh, introduce the various uh, aspects of uh, activities of ICDA. So the first colleague uh, is Yuki uh, Okada from uh, Japan, who will be uh, talking about the vision setting. And uh, please, Yuki, uh, you're welcome to speak now. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, thank you for Nico for introducing me. And yes, hello everyone. Uh, this is Yuki Noriokada from Japan. Uh, I'm at Osaka University, the University of Tokyo, and also Riken. And thank you again for joining the Badger Community Town Hall today. I'm truly really glad to meet you colleagues of ICD around the world today. So yeah, as Nico has introduced, I would like to introduce vision setting of ICDA to the scientific community. So uh, first of all, our current focus on the vision is M2M2M challenge as Nico introduced. So we already know so many biobank driven genetic maps, but to understand the disease genetics and translate them into personalized medicine, drug discovery and biological elucidation, we need to connect these genetic maps to biology and finance medicine. So we consider this is one of the strong uh, mission of ICDA community. So uh, here's the function of vision settings. So let me review vision setting functions. So here's several examples of ICDA we are doing. Uh, first, we develop, maintain, and re-evaluate the set of recommendations. We typically do it around every five years because the things are changing so rapidly. And we are glad to show here the ICD recommendation white paper, which was released by our ICDA organized committee, one of members in July of 2020. We need to keep update them in using reflecting the latest situation of human genetics and also the technologies. And ICDA is still growing and building our service. So we are Welcome to the new working groups to launch the science. So we here, for example, establish working groups as needed to address the high level scientific missions and goals of ICDA. So here's a nice review paper of for responsible user purging risk score. I think it's an important topic in the genetics of humans, which was recently published in Nature and Genetics by the ICDA PRS task force working group members. So using this, working group as a hub, the professionals of the PRS has gathered and discussed and launched nice recommendations. And of course, we actively interfere with pharma to establish scientific objectives so to finally provide new therapy and drugs to the suffering patients in the world. We need tight and respectful coordination with our colleagues as the pharma industry. So uh, what is ICDA currently doing? So first, there are sets of example working group outputs, uh, perspective pieces on priorities and gaps and next steps for addressing recommendations, global equity standard in scientific research and goals and the SNP to gene data sets. And second, pharmacology is established to provide input on ICDA scientific objectives. So not only pure academy, but interact with academy and industry. We consider the advice should be Really is for us. And finally, ICDA office, we definitely provides operation project management support to these working groups of the worldwide colleagues and members and to achieve the goal in our challenge, such as M2M2M. To M to M. So we would like to emphasize again, ICDA is still growing the building ourselves. So we are welcome and transparent for the uh, proposal and for the collaboration from the I see the members of the world right. Okay, thank you. Maybe let me introduce the next slide and next speaker. And uh, next speaker is uh, a um, wonderful executive committee member of a person. So uh, Kate, can you proceed the slide? Yeah. Okay, first I would uh, put, put the button to, button to you. Thank you very much, Yuki. Um, uh, I'm going to talk or introduce the convening of the International Common Disease Alliance. Um, how we are proceeding is that uh, we are holding a set of uh, scientific plenaries and domain-specific workshops. It is an interdisciplinary project, uh, as one can imagine, uh, it, uh, creation of genetic maps uh, and taking it forward to me uh, mechanisms and eventually uh, understanding the mechanisms uh, and translating it to medicine. So it is an interdisciplinary domain that uh, comprises various uh, domain specific uh, the domain knowledge in various uh, domains and therefore domain specific workshops are being held. 
the scientific plenaries are to introduce uh, the various aspects of this particular um, large project and also to identify themes, the diseases that we will um, impact on or we plan to impact on at least initially. Um, of course, all of this requires money and requires uh, enthusiastic investigators to come forward and collaborate uh, on, a, on a global scale. And therefore, uh, we are engaging with uh, interested investigators, uh, trying to bring in more investigators such that uh, there is a global spread. And of course, all of this needs money. And therefore, uh, we are also talking to funders and uh, uh, hoping that we will be able to uh, help the investigators uh, talk to the funders, uh, write proposals, and uh, generate funds for taking ICDA work forward. Um, some, sometimes investigators also require letters of support because they are trying to generate local funds uh, and the IC, ICDA leadership is happy to provide these letters of support so, so that uh, the, the, the whole effort can be eased at a local level. Uh, there, is, there are also other groups such as uh, Genomic Alliance for uh, Genet uh, Global Alliance for Genomics and Health. Uh, the International uh, Consortium for Biorepositories and Cohorts, uh, the Human Cell Atlas, and various academic societies uh, that are also interested in understanding common diseases. And um, uh, we are interfacing with these uh, various groups. Uh, the uh, GA4GH, for example, are, uh, is, is setting standards and we are negotiating, we are in consultation with them in order to um, uh, set up these global standards or uh, standards for various uh, um, you know, operations of, uh, of this particular uh, set of domains. And uh, so we are in touch with them. We are working together with them. Uh, as uh, all of us know that it, uh, you know, it, it is very important to uh, preserve biospecimens primarily because uh, one may not get uh, uh, all the funding to um, do all the, all the various assays. Moreover, there may be some ideas for which uh, it needs to be, uh, the ideas need to be tested. And at that time, we require biospecimens. And so biorepositories are being formed. Um, uh, also, uh, follow-up uh, protocols are very useful in the sense that time series data is much more useful to understand a common disease as opposed to a cross-sectional data and therefore following up uh, patient cohorts and also sometimes population cohorts will be helpful. So we are tying up and in negotiation with the um, uh, International uh, 100K Consortium, uh, Cohort Consortium. Uh, the Human Cell Atlas, which uh, has a single cell um, analysis as its uh, main focus, main technology focus, um, also has a, a, a lot of contribution to make it to understand uh, common diseases and therefore we are in touch with uh, HCA and many of us as a matter of fact are uh, also um, uh, members of the HCA. Uh, we are uh, you know, engaging with local academic societies as also international academic societies. So we are actually hosting various uh, plenaries and these are being um, held annually, uh, also uh, in the interim between two annual meetings, there are local meetings that uh, are being held and being hosted by the ICDA. Uh, some ideas have come forward, uh, have, have, uh, have been formalized in order to take this ICDA forward or at least take the initial steps and um, proposal development is on the way and uh, the ICDA leadership is actually um, uh, facilitating the formation and the development, formation of groups of investigators and uh, uh, pro make, developing proposals uh, such that, uh, you know, large scale um, projects can be undertaken uh, to accelerate uh, maps to mechanisms to medicine. I just mentioned about biobanks and cohorts uh, and uh, the fact that we are working with the International 100K Consortium. Uh, and right now, uh, what, what, what is happening is that we are thinking about uh, how exactly to engage with the International 100K Consortium and therefore uh, various uh, discussions are ongoing and uh, you know, white papers are being written uh, as to how um, these two, uh, these two um, you know, major, uh, major uh, communities can actually collaborate and uh, take the uh, understanding of common diseases forward. Uh, and of course, the ICDA office is providing all kinds of operational and uh, project management support. And uh, we do have uh, Kate and Rachel online, and there are other people who are also um, you know, helping us uh, 
take this forward and uh, without their support it would hardly be possible uh, for us to um, you know engage in these various activities so these are the various kinds of um, activities that are uh, you know being undertaken under the convening uh, program of the ICDA and uh, we hope that in the next meeting we will be able to provide you with some uh, success stories uh, regarding the convening and regarding these negotiations thank you very much Thank you, Partha. It's, it's Nikki Tiffin here. Hi, everyone, um, and nice to see you at the meeting. So I'm just going to moderate um, any questions or any discussion points that you'd like to bring to the group um, and for, you know, for further discussion or thoughts you've had, things you want to know more details about. So I would encourage you to use, if you look at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A function. So there is a question, a place to put question and answers. We'll also just keep an eye on the chat in case anything pops up there, but the Q&A is the best place. And then we have some questions that also came in via Google Forms, et cetera. So please um, feel free to, to post your questions wherever you find it the easiest. So um, we thought we would just stop at this point and take um, any questions or thoughts around these first um, two functions that, that have been described to us um, so nicely by Yuki and Partha. So I'm just checking all the different spots. Um, I can start with a question here, which is about the, the kind of convening function. And that question is how do we envisage ICDA interfacing um, with other groups in the m to m to m space? Um, so I know Path has mentioned this a bit already, but maybe we can have some more details on the practicalities of this. How will ICDA actually synergize the work with existing networks and associations? So um, I'm not sure who'd like to jump in to talk about that a bit more, Path. Can I hand it to you? So, so I, I just mentioned very briefly that we are engaging and this engagement is over a period of time. There are various working groups uh, that have been formed under the ICDA to take these various uh, you know, multidisciplinary domains. Uh, different domains are talking to, for example, with the Human Cell Atlas, the uh, data analysis working group uh, of the ICDA is already in talking with the data analysis working group of the um, uh, Human Cell Atlas, uh, because the ICDA will also engage in various kinds of single cell activities. And uh, it's there's no need to reinvent the wheel each time. And therefore, uh, we, can, we can learn from what's already happened in the Human Cell Atlas, so that acceleration can happen right from day one. Similarly, with respect to biorepositories and cohorts, uh, we are in engagement uh, with uh, in talking with the International um, 100K Consortium and primarily because there are already, uh, you know, patient cohorts and population cohorts who have signed up with the 100K uh, Consortium and we can actually take advantage and we don't really need to perhaps don't really need to create all kinds of cohorts ourselves. Um, the GA4, GH is, uh, uh, you know, um, developing various standards that we could already use and we are, uh, if there are modifications that are required for ICDA. We are in talking with uh, the GA4 GH leadership such that you know those modifications can be made. So these are the various ways uh, by which we are actually uh, engaging with the already uh, formed uh, uh, you know entities uh, that are interested in the broad uh, uh, domain of understanding common disease. Thank you, Partha. And perhaps I can also just add to that to mention that. We've also been participating and helped to organize a forum of different LC working groups from all the different networks. So this has also been a really nice um, synergy. We realized that lots of the networks and consortia are um, encountering similar problems or similar challenges or similar questions when they come to um, ethics, legals, um, um, and sort of community engagement questions. So we convened that working group and we had um, participants from working groups from many different uh, networks, including IHCC, GA4GH, HCA, we had people from Phage, so and, and some other groups as well that joined. So it was a really nice um, way to get together and learn from each other's existing work. And as you said, Partha, also to avoid reinventing the wheel. Great, thank you. Does, um, if anyone else wants to add uh, from yeah. the- Can I have one yeah. question? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Please, yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, as Nikki and Persa introduced, uh, I think there's a nice point, but I'd like to add, so 
I think yeah, we can also be a place where the new such kind of project will be uh, begin. So in some sense, each year is a new project, but uh, I think it can be a way. So many expertise from worlds come together and discuss and new this type of project, especially interacting with a slightly different types of area scientific. So ICDA by joining here and discussing, we hope of course uh, help and coordinate and support existing many famous projects, but also would like to launch new, more interactive and cross-sectional project. For example, PRS task force, uh, I think it's a good example. So expertise of PRS came together as ICD as a place and provided a new recommendation. So uh, we are welcome for any kinds of project proposal joining in collaboration. Thank you. Great, thanks Yuki. Um, anyone else want to add to that uh, from, from our panelists? I can also move on to the next question we have here um, and we can you know, bring in comments on the prior question as well. That's not, not a problem at all. So we have a question, in what way um, does the ICDA plan to inter or is currently interacting with funders in order to help take forward the proposed work? So I wonder, Cecilia, maybe I can ask you to take that, that question first. That's a good question. So as Nicole outlined, uh, we don't work as a funder, so we don't have any money that we hand out for projects and we operate without central support funding at the moment. Uh, we do note, however, that we do have uh, close connections with a number of funders. So both NIH have a representative um, on our organizing committee and are active in our discussions and are participating in all our workshops and our town halls and plenaries and so forth. So Caroline Hutter has been our eminent uh, NIH representative. Uh, the Wellcome Trust are also similarly engaged and Michael Dunn has been a representative there. Um, so we have close discussions with them. Then secondly, in a couple of cases, and I think we can go over to Andres who can talk about his experience with the Latin Genomes Project, how ICDA has collaborated uh, with him there. Um, we're currently in the process of having ICDA community standing up projects that are larger than any one individual group would do. We have a range of projects popping up. And in those scenarios, what we have done is that we have sort of match were made, uh, sort of, so we're identifying uh, sort of funders that might be interested in various projects and sort of pitching them together with the uh, PIs. Um, and I think that that's sort of a way that we're going to move forward. As Partha mentioned, we're also writing support letters for people that have their own projects that they want to uh, sort of push forward. And if it sort of falls within the ICDA remit and uh, we want, you know, we can do anything to support and they deem it appropriately, we, we're sort of happy to do that. Um, so I don't think that there is a one size fits all model uh, to this, but A, we have active engagement with. Um, funding, uh, both on governmental and philanthropic sort of accesses in the ICDA, we match make and we're trying to support individual groups. We should also mention that a, a really important aspect of ICDA is to be uh, working across uh, various disciplines and stakeholder groups. So we have an active um, pharma council that are deeply embedded in each of our working group. Um, and we are in discussion with them if they would be interested in any of the projects we're doing as well. Uh, and of course, that's sort of to the discretion of both the pharma uh, companies, but also the different working groups and so forth. So there is a matchmaking and ongoing discussion, finding the best match for the best pro uh, sort of project. Uh, and it, it is upon us as a community to propose projects that fit within the ecosystem, like Partha pointed out, we don't want to reinvent the wheel or compete unnecessarily in an area where there is already activity, um, but where we identify gaps and bottlenecks and see solutions to that and have clearly crisply identified projects that can sort of do that. I think that there is a real opportunity for us to help accelerate the field. 
Thank you. That's that's great. Thanks, um, Cecilia. So, Andres, I'm wondering if you would like to hold off talking about the um, the <clears throat> the supporting function until we've actually been through that section, or whether you would like to add to that comment now, because you will be talking more widely about this in in our next uh, two presentations. Yeah, absolutely, Nikki. It would be better contextualized after introducing the supporting function, and I can mention some of it as well. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So that's uh, still coming up. It's just being um, just being postponed slightly until we have a bit more contextual information. So I have one more question here, um, and that is: Will ICDA have equal interest and support for all of the three um, M's? Um, so max uh, max mechanisms. Um, uh, Etc. And then um, we'll um, so so yeah the preclinical development of medicines the pathogens and mapping the genes how will the focus of ICDA kind of be distributed between these and I wonder Ben if that might be something you would like to talk to sure ha happy to speak to that I'm, I mean ICDA has representation from the full range of activities from genetic map creation through to V2F and mechanistic exploration of what genetic associations are doing. And we have a pharma council that's been mentioned a bit earlier in the discussion, who's, and, and a lot of the kind of human genetics oriented uh, part of pharma R&D is, you know, that that's like, in a sense, the vibrant constituency that we have represented in ICDA more, more broadly. And, you know, I think human geneticists have a very long track record of working together and working collaboratively and trying to, in a sense, create the most systematic comprehensive view of what started with just, you know, sequencing the genome, but now has moved to characterizing genetic variation and the impact that it has on human health and, and disease. And so we like still carry that spirit and identity with us. And so all parts of the M to M to M challenge are critical to the success of realizing the vision of, you know, human genetic inquiry to make progress on human illness and, and disease. Um, nevertheless, there's like going to be different foci for different investigators predicated on what their expertises are and what kinds of projects they like to pursue. And, you know, we'd expect, I think, a little bit more on the early genetic mapping and maybe some of the slightly more skunk works, mechanistic exploration kinds of considerations to be happening a bit more in the academic parts of our constituencies. And then moving into, you know, maybe scaling up for things like screening or thinking about drug development more generally, we expect the kind of transition onto the, the pharma side where that's, you know, in a sense, what their social responsibility is as the, you know, system is currently configured and structured. So, um, you know, the, the projects that we're working on really developing, though, I think are probably a little bit more in the earlier stages rather than the later stages in terms of you know, expanding our view of what genetic variation does across a wide range of human phenotypes, be they cellular or gene regulation kinds of phenotypes, or be they, you know, cell function, or even, you know, kind of continuing to diversify and internationalize our views of um, disease genetic studies and making sure that we have as much knowledge about as many different genetic variants as possible. Um, and that'll live more on the academic side versus the industry side that I think pulls through on the on the back end. So all are welcome here. I guess that's probably uh, our tagline if we have one. That's fantastic. And I guess over time, as well as projects mature, we'll see the, the focus um, for each project starting to shift towards the more sort of um, to more towards the end game and the medicines um, point of view. And, and hopefully that's what we're going to be able to move along a bit faster through the collaborative work. Thanks, Ben. So I think maybe at this point, if there are no other pressing questions about these um, first two functions, perhaps we should uh, move on. And um, I can introduce, although we've already seen him talking, Andres Moreno Estrada, who's going to talk to us about the supporting function. Um, so I'm going to hand over to you, Andres. Thanks. Great, thank you. Thank you, Tiki. Um, uh, Nikki, sorry. 
And thank you uh, all for joining this um, uh, second day of the town hall for the community and uh, to introduce the various functions that ICDA has been doing. So uh, my name is Andres Moreno. I am um, from the National Laboratory of Genomics for Biodiversity in Mexico. And I'm glad to join the executive committee together with all the other colleagues uh, in this uh, fantastic global team. I think uh, the composition of the executive committee speaks itself towards the vision and the um, supporting uh, function as well that it wants to be translated not only to specific projects, but I think to leadership as well uh, throughout the representation of various regions, expertises and how that, that has been introduced so far. And I think it's, it's, it's great that we are um, able to have different perspectives and, and translate them into different um, projects that we will be um, also talking about here. So to introduce this supporting function, I think is so essential to uh, recapitulate what, what Parta was introducing from the convening function, because uh, the very first step for many of these goals is to get together. And I think that's what ICDA has been doing uh, very well since its conception, which is let's get together and discuss what are the next uh, uh, challenges that the scientific community globally should tackle uh, in order to improve our understanding in human genetics. So from, from like it has been said, from, from maps to mechanisms to medicine. So, so that's kind of the, the very first thing that goes before supporting. Once these groups, and as Yuki also has been introducing, working with within ICDA with different perspectives and goals um, uh, from specific projects or diseases or, or global equity working groups, the next uh, very important function that ICD has been uh, providing is to basically uh, keep those efforts alive. And that's through uh, operational and administrative support. So again, just to make it very clear, this is not through direct funding support, but it's rather through uh, keeping these groups that have already been coming together and then keep them um, operationally alive in terms of you know, keeping track of the uh, um, progress they are making, uh, getting together with meetings. Uh, this is something that has been supported um, very much by um, uh, Kate Balaconis, uh, Amy, uh, Rachel Liao, also as executive director um, in the initial stages of, of, of ICDA as really keeping these groups together and, and, and help us to get um, regular meetings and a channel that really provides us to have an open forum to keep discussing and make progress. So I see this more like a scientific tissue, if we want to think about, as ICDA has been creating to really uh, come up with ideas that otherwise wouldn't have been possible. I think this is one of the main differentiators of ICDA that we don't want just to kind of repeat what everyone was already doing within their own groups or countries is really to come to, to come up with ideas that otherwise would have been possible to bring them to the larger new step that is required for, for global challenges. So uh, as, a, as, as a few examples of how this has been really been translated into support and specific initiative, I would mention um, probably the, the most um, known so far is the COVID-19 host genetics initiative, which has been quite successful already. Uh, you may have seen already um, even a couple of publications that have been out there in the past few months where this is coming or, or joining different cohorts of, of COVID cases and making and, and then performing meta-analysis to improve power to really uh, try to do this as fast as possible and try to understand genetic determinants at a, at a global and bigger scale. And this is, you know, from the data generation and data analysis point of view, this has been largely led uh, in Finland um, by the group led by Mark Daly and also Andrea Gana, but, uh, but, but also operationally and probably behind the scenes has been largely supported by ICPA as well through these um, Slack channels and meetings. And like I, like I was mentioning, uh, keeping track of progress made. And this is also pretty much under the leadership that Rachel Liao also took part in this in this project. So I think that's a good example of how independent research groups come together. It's not that ICDA is funding them directly or anything like that, but really uh, keeping them together to, to make progress on their objectives and then delivering um, at a global scale. So I think that's that's uh, that's a one one good example. Um, the second one probably uh, also international, but more like a, in a regional level, which is uh, Latin American Alliance for Genomic Diversity that I have the honor to be co-leading together with uh, Ricardo Verdugo from Chile, who is also a member of the um, organizing committee at ICDA. We have been also uh, trying to 
uh, get together the community within Latin America. And so far, this is this is a growing group that is so far representing more than uh, nine countries across Latin America. And the idea is very similar to try to come um, together expertises and visions to do um, another level of research that requires putting together data and expertise and, and resources that we can have locally. Because I think that's another strength that ICDA has been uh, emphasizing, which is having support towards projects that have global impact, but still keep leadership locally to the experts that know better the, um, the, the reality of their own region, which is in this case, human genetics about Latin American populations to, to keep on bringing experts that know, um, you know those populations and have the community engagement uh, in place locally. So um, uh, both um, ICDA and also Latin Genome, which is the short name of this alliance, are pretty much open communities, so everyone is is really um, you know welcome to uh, sign up and, and and join with their expertise and interest. For example, Latin genomes is not like uh, exclusively for people in Latin America. It's really whoever has uh, this uh, shared vision of having uh, projects that are locally led within Latin America with a primarily focus on Latin American populations and with this vision of data sharing and exchanging expertise is, is welcome to join. And like I said, this is a growing community. And ICD has been providing support as well to keep us uh, on track on, on keeping together. Another example, uh, it's probably uh, at a larger scale, this Global Biobank Meta-Analysis Initiative that uh, also Ben here in the forum is, is involved and can speak about that in more detail. But it's basically uh, a similar idea to bring together different cohorts uh, worldwide, but with a more diverse scope in terms of phenotype, biobanks that have been ranging from, um, you know, the, the bigger biobanks that already exist in the UK, in China, in Finland, uh, uh, in, the, in, in the America. So basically, it's, it's coming together with all these um, big biobanks also to try to uh, um, uh, enhance power and statistical analysis for meta-analysis. So I think uh, these are just like a few examples, definitely not a comprehensive list of what ICD has been supporting. Definitely there are other projects that have been um, being born within ICDA as a community, because like Yuki said, it's also uh, the, the, the idea is that new, the new projects can be um, um, crystallized, visualized and crystallized within the coming together of ICDA. And this is pretty much work in progress within all the working groups uh, at ICDA. So, so I think this is why these plenaries and town halls are important to uh, keep people informed of what we're doing. Uh, and we hope to have uh, definitely more progress in the future. So yeah, I think uh, that summarizes the supporting function and happy to, to move to the next one. Thank you so much, Andres. Um, I think we can move to the next slide and I would like to introduce the next speaker who is uh, Ben Neal from the Broad who will talk about the strategic coordination function. I just want to remind you that uh, you can ask, uh, your, uh, put your question in a Q&A or through the uh, chat function. Thanks, Nicole. And I, I think, you know, strategic nations may be the flip side of the convening and supporting activities um, insofar as there's, you know, clear desire in the community to advance beyond just genetic mapping of disease traits through GWAS and those sorts of things and, and definite interest in pushing the boundaries on characterizing the biological consequences of genetic variation and what that might mean in terms of how we think about changes to gene expression, how we think about changes to chromatin, how we think about all of those kinds of molecular mechanisms by which genetic variation might operate. And then extending beyond those molecular mechanisms into cellular phenotypes, into tissue or histological phenotypes, into maybe physiological phenotypes, as a way to sort of reveal how genetic variation is impacting disease risk and disease processes. And so, you know, that's a big space, right? Like that's like as big a space as biomedical research for all intents and purposes. Um, and it is, as I think many of us have been saying on the town hall so far, not gonna be consolidated into a single mammoth project that will solve all of the world's problems in this kind of set of questions. Um, but nevertheless, we recognize that there do that we do need to, in a sense, bring communities together. We do need to work together to solve these problems. And, and I, I think part of the other way of considering and conceptualizing ICDA 
is that it is you know focused on activities that can't be done in a single lab or a you know single r01 grant or something like that that these really should be the ambitious cross community truly international efforts to drive forward the science and so we have this strategic coordination function and we've engaged in a series of sort of proposal development workshops where members of the community coalesce around ideas, try and develop and articulate scientific programs that would address those fundamental questions of like, what are all these associated variants doing? And put that forward to the ICDA community, to the wider community, and seek feedback and refinement and work together to really develop the set of ideas and proposals that we think we can try and carry forward to answer these kinds of questions. And so that kind of strategic coordination and convening is, is really a lot of our effort right now as we are in the planning stages of the, I think, implementation of the science that we need to deploy in order to address the ICDA recommendations and the white papers that like scoped out what our problems were in, in the first place. And on the right hand side of this slide, you can see the sort of ICDA map ideas that are starting to crystallize around focused effort on, you know, maybe building a model map to take cellular models one step further, expand the sort of number of different people contributing material to those lines and start to think about how we might genetically map certain biological processes. The body map effort, a uh, much more diverse uh, and kind of international view of, you know, omic profiling of many tissues in a set of individuals that have also been, say, genomically profiled. And then the third one is this kind of disease map, which is like a lot of the sort of assays that people use or approaches people take to try and answer the question about what's going on in the disease state when we think about something like inflammatory bowel disease or myocardial infarction or atherosclerosis, you know, take your disease endpoint of, of choice. We get into some of these slightly more bespoke questions, but there are commonalities in terms of what kinds of data types people want to use, how to maximize the value of those kinds of data collections, how to define what a sort of cell that might be in a disease state looks different from a cell that might be in a healthy state, how we think about those kinds of questions and approaches. And so getting investigators working on translating genetic discoveries into those mechanistic insights across diseases will, I think, help us learn what, what can be shared and what does need to be bespoke or tailored to each of the different disease endpoints. And so this strategic coordination function is to recognize the diversity of scientific activity that needs to happen to answer these questions, but opportunistically identify areas where we can work together, where we can create something that is you know, greater than the sum of the parts. Uh, and, and all the way through, because we have many different moving parts here, right? We have genetic discovery, we've got biological interrogation of cells and tissues, and then we have to think about what assays we want to be developing and deploying in order to assess, you know, the impact of genetic variation, but also perhaps serve as the basis for thinking about therapeutic screens. We, we want mechanisms of working together. And so you can see along the right-hand side, this idea of common data platforms, the degree to which we can integrate and in a sense co-localize data sets and pipelines and expertise across the, the community should help us realize that vision of going from maps to mechanisms to, to medicines. And so this strategic coordination function is really there to develop the best possible scientific ideas necessary to move us forward along this journey as we're all eager to get to the next generation of new treatments and therapies, new insights for how we think about diagnosing or managing disease. All those things are possible with the discoveries that we've made in human genetics. We just have to be smart enough to figure it, figure it out. Thank you so much, Ben. That was, uh, that was great. So last but uh, not least, uh, uh, least but not last, uh, <laughs> I would like to introduce uh, the last speaker, Cecilia Lindgren, who's going to talk about the community uh, engagement uh, uh, training and dissemination functions. I'm muted. I do this every time. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, 
So last but not least of the five pillars of what ICDA is focusing on, uh, we have community engagement, training and dissemination. So this is really one of the five key core functions that we feel is incredibly important for us to be able to operate efficiently and impactfully as a group on a global scale. So uh, we work in this area by disseminating information uh, of the output that we have in ICDA and any progress that we have related to the m to m to m challenge. We work to secure equitable access to advanced technology and data resources. And that's not a small task. Uh, so that's something that requires deep thought and, and also um, sort of buy-in from all our different stakeholders and all our global representatives. Um, we have cross-cutting themes, doing science in an e ethical and equitable, responsible way. And uh, within those cross-cutting themes, we're also thinking about how to promote and support opportunities for a global community of trainees. Um, and I'll give examples of what we're doing uh, in this various area. So we have a global equity working group that is developing an amazing global equity standard that is basically like a, a quantitative and qualitative sort of metric for evaluating scientific research and how well you're doing on an EDI axis. And that's something that we're hoping to implement in all the different kinds of research that we're doing. Um, and several of the members of the EC here have been um, active and sort of inputting into that. ICDA office also posts scientific plenaries and town halls on YouTube for the community. So if anybody misses what we're doing, uh, we have quite hot traffic on our YouTube channel and it's also all on the ICDA webpage. And we're piloting a membership newsletter to update the broader membership on ICDA activities. One of the struggles we have actually when you have global representation as in the EC is that it's hard to find good times that suit everyone giving time uh, zone differences, and it might sound trivial, but it's something you need to take into account. So being able to disseminate and spread information in an equitable way and making it available and easy to access and easy to understand and digest for everyone is something we're really sort of thinking about. In, in addition, we also have a number of training uh, sort of foci that we're thinking about and that we're going to start to launch. So we're working towards launching a summer school um in uh, genomics of common diseases uh, we're aiming to start a, a global journal club uh, for trainees um which is really exciting and we're also thinking about uh seeking and we're in discussion with the funders about seeking um, funding for uh, international and global sort of trainee opportunities where we would circulate trainees between different labs as a way to sort of spread know-how and uh, technology access uh, sort of in a more equitable and global way. So those are just like quick flavors of the type of work we're doing in this area. And if you go in and check our website out and also the uh, YouTube channel and also we have a big Slack channel so if you email the office they can add you to the Slack channel uh, you'll get ample updates about what we're doing. Thank you. Thanks Cecilia um, that was great and I think we we can go to more questions at this point uh, for particularly for the supporting fun function, the strategic co coordination function and community engagement function. But of course, if there are any other general questions, they're equally welcome. Um, so maybe we can start um, asking about in terms of strategic coordination, um, this question, are there certain parts of the conceptual framework that ICDA, ICDA will move towards first? So maybe I can ask um, Ben, if you'd like to address that. Sure. So <clears throat> I, I think the sort of uh, body map effort is probably the most <clears throat> mature and well-developed of the proposals at this um, point. Uh, I think that's just kind of as much a happenstance of, of timing and, and progress of that group as it is um, among any of the other ones. 
in some ways, it's perhaps the easiest to conceptualize and perhaps the most natural proximal step of some of the initiatives that are out there as it's trying to really push on the question of building the resources for investigators around the world to leverage deeper omic profiling to interpret what their genetic studies are are you know trying to teach us um, in a you know in the various discussions around ICDA planning one of the things that I certainly heard very clearly was uh, you know GTEx is great but GTEx is not fully representative of every different population group or cohort there and so has clear limitations for like genetic discoveries that are made in other parts of the world and so you know, really moving to try and internationalize and address that so that we can everyone benefit from these sorts of standard resource data sets um, became a pretty clear message early on. And, and I think that's perhaps why it kind of catalyzed a little bit more rapidly than some of the other efforts that are, in a sense, less clear in terms of precisely what science needs to be done at this point in time. And, and I think that that also is like the other major contributing component that like we have numerous examples of omic profiling across multiple tissues and individuals and the value that that adds to the interpretation of, uh, you know, kind of genetic studies, how to do V2F in a systematic way, how to get different disease areas working together in a kind of consistent fashion. That's a much taller order. And I think by, you know, virtue of the challenges associated with that, it's going to take us a little bit longer of a time to crack that particular nut. Great, thanks, Ben. Thank you. Um, and we have another question. Um, what is the relationship of ICDA with larger private public partners, such as Open Targets and FinGen? So maybe, Cecilia, could I maybe ask you if you'd like to Take yeah, that so that's a good question. So we think if there are existing private public partners, um, such as Open Targets and FinGen, um, they have their own research programs ongoing. Um, we uh, can collaborate with them. We do have a communication with Open Targets, and our former uh, eminent co chair. Uh, Mark Daly uh, is one of the lead PIs of FinGen. So I would say we have a close and warm relationship with the FinGen. It doesn't give us exclusive uh, access to any of the resources. So it's not a way of bypassing any uh, sort of large public uh, private partnerships. Um, but we do um, work closely with them and liaise strategies with them. Another relationship here is that the scientific director of the Open Targets, Gosha Trinka, is a um, you know very prominent figure in many of our working groups and she's uh, co-leading a lot of the sort of thoughts on the cellular um, mapping and the disease mapping in here. So I would say that it's close and warm and synergetic, but it's distinct. If anybody wants to add anything, you can so thank you kate did you want to add a comment oh, oh cecilia's covered it well okay great thanks kate anybody else want to add anything to cecilia's answer okay great i guess uh, one one thing maybe to add is really that the feature you know part of the community of scientists in icda are really uh, around the uh, data openness and, you know, do we all come from institutions that have been promoting the data openness and, and generation of resources. And, and this is very much the spirit of ICDA as well. And so, you know, uh, thinking about, you know, really where these initiatives are making a difference and continue to make a difference is not only the scientific work in itself that they drive, but really the, 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 the setting up platforms for the community. Uh, so in that sense, I think our mission and philosophy is very aligned to the spirit of these large scale initiatives and very much uh, inter intertwined and interlinked with that. And of course, the work uh, on polygenic uh, risk scores and, you know, the polygenic risk score catalog is one example, but of course, uh, there are many others, including, um, you know, that involving all the sequencing data sets and functional genomic data sets that are being generated. So. Um, we see this very much uh, uh, as uh, perhaps one of the best ways to empower the broad community, you know, alongside the provision of capacity and training. 
Thanks, Nicole. That's great. Um, uh, Yuki? Hi, uh, I would like to add uh, one comment. So I'm uh, going to the name of Gosha Trinka. Uh, definitely, she is a rising strain this year. So I think ICDA want to put support for more support on the young researchers or young investigators research who, who are working on postdoc who just started their laboratory. So they are ambitious and good knowledge, but they want to get some connection with partner or collaboration. I think ICDA uh, would fully support these young researchers. So I want uh, many young researchers in the world want to have interested in how ICDA can contribute to their career stages. So I think that's a really good point, Yuki. I think we sometimes should remind ourselves that diversity comes on many axes. So we represent not only the global community, but we also have a career seniority axis, we have the LGBTQ community, we have the gender equality aspect of it. So we should take upon ourselves to operate fully under EBI in ICDA. Um, and, and, you know, we have a special emphasis on sort of thinking about how to promote early career researchers. And as I mentioned, sort of having that sort of mobility scheme and thinking about summer schools and journal clubs and so forth, which we're aiming to launch. Um, would really sort of help us in that aspect. So I think that's a really good point, Yuki. Thank you. Um, great. And then uh, I think this speaks quite well to that comment also, um, Cecilia's comment and, and Yuki's comment about the different axes of um, diversity. So how does ICDA plan to solicit participation from stakeholders in, in different or underrepresented groups so those groups could be um, geographically distinct regions of, you know, global regions or also underrepresented uh, sectors of our, our research ecosystem. So I don't know, Papa, perhaps um, this is something you might be interested to, to answer. Um, other, yeah. Uh, just sure. To, um, great, thank you. Uh, yeah, but Nikki, could you please briefly repeat the question? I missed a little bit of the question. Uh, yes, sure. Um, just how ICDA is planning to solicit participation from stakeholders who are kind of in unrepresented groups. So that could be geographically unrepresented, um, but it could also be different sectors of our research ecosystem. We were just talking about younger researchers, for example. Right. Um, but just in general, the kind of um, outreach that, that is envisaged. Right. So, so essentially, we have uh, discussed these both of these points in uh, two separate working groups. One is the equity working group and the other is the ethics working group. Both groups have discussed this. And one of the ways that we think that we will engage with these, uh, you know, underrepresented communities or underrepresented geographies is essentially to hold community level discussions and, uh, uh, you know, propagate what the goals of um, IC ICDA are. Um, and uh, we are pretty sure that uh, there will be some investigators in the uh, within the local communities who will come forward to participate. And we hope to uh, engage them in these domain specific workshops and also in the scientific plenaries so that they could understand more in depth uh, what, what it entails to participate. And uh, so essentially we uh, do wish to uh, democratize the whole concept of ICDA and understanding of this, uh, not just in institutions, but also in communities so that uh, we get their participation. I think that's the, the fundamental approach and there are nuances to this as well. Thanks, Martha. And I think, I mean, even in the small steps, we're, we're doing things like watching how we schedule our meetings so they don't always exclude the same global geographies um, from, uh, from meetings and moving our meetings around the globe and, and trying to ensure that they're not always um, centralized in one part of the globe um, and that it's the same group of people who are always struggling and traveling enormous uh, distances to, to get to meetings. So there are also the small steps that come on top of the, um, the bigger picture steps. Yeah. You know. So I, I guess I would say from our side that we're trying to at least be very intentional about being inclusive um, and making sure that we don't have a kind of only Global North um, focus on how we are 
um, inclusive. Um, so yeah, I think those are the main questions. Um, do we have, have I missed any other questions? Uh, I'm just having a look. Uh, we've talked about, we've answered the trainees question. Yeah, I think, I think um, that seems to be most of them at this point. Um, there was a question, um, some practical measures and initiatives to improve access for instance, how are we going to facilitate access to HPC for analysis, capacity building, et cetera? And I wonder then, maybe that would be something that you could speak to? Yeah, it's a great question. And you know, one that we obviously grapple with um, in a lot of different venues in a lot of different ways. I mean, even cloud-based solutions don't resolve instances where there <coughs> are rolling blackouts or internet connectivity is not a guarantee. And I know that that is, certainly part of the landscape for many of the investigators in the you know wider international community i think you know where where possible we are trying to in a sense lower the barriers to make use and access kind of data and results and you know i think things like portals and browsers of associations that don't require a lot in the way of compute can improve the uptake of the sorts of data sets and analyses that are being generated across the community. I think there's a lot of interest in ICDA about federated solutions and how to capitalize on infrastructure in multiple different places, but still, you know, enable some sort of federated answer to the um, kinds of, of questions, but that doesn't necessarily address the infrastructure capability gap. Um, and so we're still working on like what the right solutions to that part of the problem might might look like. Uh, I think a lot of it will be technical by its very nature, right? And, and the degree to which that we can maybe even lean on some of our connections in maybe tech industry would be um, another way to certainly underwrite or facilitate that kind of um, consideration. But yeah, it's an important question and one that we are working on. Great. Thanks, Ben. Um, so actually, I'm going to hand back to you. I think we've um, come to the end of our questions. And it's, um, so I'll hand over to you just to summarize. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, I'd, I'd first like to thank all of my uh, executive committee members and the ICDA office and, and team for setting up these town halls and the scientific plenary that we're also fresh off of. Uh, I think there's a tremendous opportunity for us to transform our understanding of human genetics, human health, and human disease. And the ICDA is up for and ready for that mission. And so if you want to get involved or engaged, um, look at our website, icda.bio. Feel free to join our Slack communities. Feel free to roll up your sleeves and get to work. And we'll welcome you with open arms into this international collaborative endeavor. Um, and with that, I'll say thank you. And have a good rest of your day.